everyone good evening Hi Jagdish, good evening. Hi Dr. Raman, how are you? I'm good. Good evening, sir. Hello, good. sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Hello, Hi, everyone. Hi, Mom. Hello, Pratik, sir. <laughs> Thank you for joining, uh, sir. It's a pleasure to have you here. <laughs> Uh, we'll wait for another two, three minutes. We'll wait for a few more minutes, Sylvia. Yeah. So thank you, Dr. Roman, for doing this. I mean, this is the 11th Fab of Friday. It started with the simple thought that uh, our team, we were visiting somewhere called Impact Fridays. And then we thought we should do something for, for Faba as well. Then Faba Fridays got started. It became a weekly session now. One of our central part of Faba right now. <laughs> no, it's a good initiative. Yeah. And, uh, especially when it is towards the end of the week. Uh, people yeah. go a little light and they're okay to you know, <laughs> take anything. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. 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 So we, we were looking into the statistics who is attending and who is not. So we were surprised to see that there are more than 180 institutes. Mm -hmm. So from across 10 countries. And around 35 professionals, with different type of backgrounds, MSc, PhD, even from the industry are joining these this calls. Mm, mm, mm. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. So people will slowly start. <clears throat> Mamta, how are you feeling? How is your yeah, life? I'm good. I'm good, Jagdish. Started jogging already? Huh? <laughs> Started jogging already? <laughs> yeah, not yet. <laughs> I, I'm 80% okay now. Okay. So, Dr. Aman from, uh, where are you from, sir? Dr. Aman. You can call me Aman as well, no problem. <laughs> uh, I am uh, now logging in from Chennai. I am based in Chennai. Okay. Yeah. I work with uh, Sterling Resorts. Have you heard of Sterling Resorts? Uh, yeah, I had, yes. yes. Uh, I head the corporate HR. Okay. Okay. I work out of their uh, corporate office here in Chennai. So a lot of hiring and firing? Uh, less firing. I mean, we try <laughs> and not get into that firing. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, hiring is yes, big time. Okay. We are opening close to 12 resorts in the next eight okay. Ten months. Okay. So hiring on a very big scale. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. I'm assuming all of you are logging in from Hyderabad. Yes. So oh, team is yeah. based out of Hyderabad. Yeah, but the participants are all over from the world. We have from Nigeria and Pakistan and everywhere. Yeah. Sure, sure. Nice. I think we can start, sir, at six. Yes. We'll, I think we'll wait for two more minutes, Sylvia. Yeah, sure, sure. Because uh, I, I mean, the numbers go until 60, 70 or 100, right? So yeah. We can wait so, for a few minutes because there's no point in starting without them having interaction among themselves. I think uh, they join late because uh, we finish our intro introduction part of <laughs> <laughs> then there's no point of introducing Papa. Right? <laughs> exactly. Even the last time I heard they joined late. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think late. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. But anyway, we have to do our duty. There should be a formal uh, protocol for everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, Mentor Humphrey, from where are you, Mentor Humphrey? So, the rule number one of this Faba Fridays is everybody has to turn on their cameras and also microphones. And this is a community we, we are building. I've been trying to tell you from every uh, from the first beginning on. There's no point being shy, no, uh, turning off your cameras, turning off your microphones. Uh, I, I think at one point we'll really push you to, to turn on your cameras or otherwise we will really throw you out from the Zoom because the, the community is what we expected are not building in, in Pub Up Fridays. It's just people are coming, people are coming as if, you know, there is an attendance and one has to go in. But these are all 
you know, out of interest that we are doing it. Pratik Kumar Srivastava, sir. <laughs> Thank you for joining. It looks like you are in the airport. Ah, yes, yes, uh, Jagdish. We uh, initially contacted with you uh, when you are in a Germany. And later on, my sister also connected with you in a Munich. But unfortunately, you are about to leave from there. And she ah. couldn't meet you. Uh, yes, Roli Srivastava is there. Oh, so, you are uh, in Shanghai, right? Fortunately, she is here with me. <laughs> we are doing a shopping. So she, she, she came here to... Uh, like uh, there is a um, uh, holiday started for the kids so okay. she is here okay okay so, we will uh, later on uh, talk okay <laughs> thank you jagdish sir huh? you are dialing in from shanghai right yeah 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 yes, yes, yes. Okay. absolutely absolutely very good very good <laughs> hello mentor humphrey hi indu good evening uh, hello i'm from nigeria <laughs> hi indu how are you I'm good. I'm good. How are you? How are things? Yeah, yeah, getting better. We are, we're getting a lot of. Uh, Hello, everyone. Hello, Indu. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Mamta. Nice hi. to see you all hi. again. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you. I'm doing proper job, Doctor Jack. But we are oh. busy. Sharma, sir. Good evening. Yeah. Hi. Hello, sir. Yeah. Busy with, with work only, Indu. So many things are coming our way. We are building a couple of finishing schools. I know, I know. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I know. That's why I'm waiting. Okay. Did you, yeah. did you look at the fellowship that you wanted to apply? Yeah, I have not applied actually because I was so busy a bit. And uh, one of the requirements is um, recommendation letter from the institute. Okay, maybe ask. You can ask here in the in our group if somebody is somebody can help you out. Okay, okay. Yeah. What exactly you want, Jamis? Oh, um, be well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good, Chipuze. Yeah, well yeah. mm, Fridays are special days I'm for actually, because of Faber Fridays. <laughs> yes, I'm actually applying for CIISR uh, fellowship. Yeah. And uh, I am applied for postdoc. So one of the requirements is um, a letter from the institution. The institution is in India. So I am requesting if Faber have a link that can assist me to apply for it. Because without the letter, there is no need applying. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the better would be identify your area of interest and maybe... Dr. Mamta can help you out. If yeah, you I my area of interest is um, infectious disease um, from pharmaceutical microbiology and biotechnology. Okay. Even the oh. university hall, yeah. Hyderabad also he can approach, uh, but not only CSR fellowship, he can go for the DBT, DSD, and other fellowship as well. No, no, there was then one fellowship that launched only for uh, uh, foreigners who can come to India and do research. The University of Hyderabad is better. Okay. Uh, because um, the CDFD is the DBT Institute uh, and CCMB is, I think C CCMB is the CSIR Institute. The okay. CCMB and University of Hyderabad, he can approach. Okay. I, I can you please send the link? Send yeah. the link? Yeah, sure, sure. I will. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you should follow up. Should say. Even okay, I will. Say, you should not I'm say I'm busy. busy. Next time, when you say busy, then uh, there's no point. <laughs> okay, <laughs> for school, I will. really busy, that means nobody will help you out. Okay, okay, you, you are the one who have to go behind people. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. Good evening, everybody. Please turn on your cameras and microphones. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Akramon, do you have any tips and tricks to make everybody alive and uh, alert? I do. <laughs> so, uh, people Hello, if you want me to speak, Hi, you have to switch on the <laughs> camera so that I don't feel like I'm a supply student. <laughs> you know, supply mm -hmm. students generally talk to themselves. Right, a yes. That is equal to AB square plus BC square 500 times. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I think let's start. So people will be joining. 
So good evening, everybody, or good afternoon for our Nigerian friends, and also we'll have speak people a lot a lot of them joining from Germany and also US. So whichever time zone you are, a very very warm welcome. So we are very happy to basically launch this Faba Friday's eleventh time. So today is eleventh Friday that we are doing it. The momentum for Faba Fridays is going on really big, and and we are getting praise from you know big pharma companies like Dr. Reddy's or uh, Rabindo somewhere where, I mean, somehow people are getting to know this initiative and they, they everybody gets connected when they want to mentor to students. Because even though how much big company you run or how much big research lab you do, in the end, you are connected to train people. So that's where I think everybody loves to mentor. So, but anyway, so uh, let's let's follow our protocol as uh, I will introduce everybody what exactly Faba is. And also thank you to a couple of people last week, they took membership with Faba. So which helps us, uh, you know, to, to make this, initiative much further. So let me start sharing the screen. So for also Dr. Raman and everybody to, who do not know what FABA is, because Dr. Raman doesn't belong to healthcare industry, but at, but thanks for you that taking your time to train our people on personal branding. But let me explain you what FABA is, and then afterwards you will see what kind of activities we do. So FABA, I'll, I'll do a very small presentation. I'll not uh, run you through everything. So FABA is Federation of Asian Biotech Association, launched in 20, 2004 as a non-profit organization, mainly to connect, you know, industry and academia where, you know, there's a lot of, they work in silos, like industry doesn't talk to academia or academia doesn't talk to industry. So that's where we want, like, you know, to bridge the gap. And uh, uh, fortunately, we got into many countries. We are present right now in 22 countries. We connect various players in pharma, biopharma. We are a unifying body. We connect governments too in different countries. We help a couple of products from the pharma, com uh, pharma companies to launch in different countries. So we are also an upskilling center. So our mission basically is to promote the innovation entrepreneurship in biotechnology. Even though we call biotechnology, it's whole, whole, whole licenses. Anything to deal with healthcare or life sciences, we are in for it. So we work with various stakeholders. We work with government organizations, incubators, investors, students, startups, institutes, pharma, biopharma, universities, and colleges. When we say we work with it, we have various models how to work with people. With for governments, for example, they they sometimes launch some kind of initiatives through us, like for example, a biotechnology ignition grant or something. So they come through us, and and sometimes we are MOU partners. And like that, we we basically do programs with various organizations. So for a, for people who doesn't know what, what FABA is, FABA right now, so today I'll explain you in three ways what FABA can be identified. As a first pillar is a biotechnology ecosystem builder or enabler, because this this area is not so uh, so charming as IT sector. Biotech is a bit dry, and and we connect various players. So uh, before before introducing what FABA is, we have a very big team. We are connect. We are mentored by big patrons like Mr. B. P. Acharya Garu, who is an IAS officer, Ms. Sheila Baide, who is an IAS officer, and Saidi Hasan, who was the uh, ex VC of University of Hyderabad. And this is our executive committee, which actually is the brain behind Faba, which is called as we call it as think tank of Faba. Right now, we have our president from Bangladesh, Dr. Azdul Ghani, and our main main man behind Faba is Professor Redena, who is our executive president. Currently, is in US. And uh, that's why he's unable to join. But otherwise, once he joins, I think that's a, that's he he brings the whole energy and power to Faba. And we have various people. It could be you know from academia or industry or startups or even from governments. They are all like the you know driving force behind Faba. We call it as executive council because this is a non-profit organization. We have some structures to follow. So we also have international chapters. Couple of them are very active. Couple of them are not. Couple of them new chapters are opening up. For example, Czech Republic or Vietnam, we are opening up. So with all this, basically what we do is that we do big, big initiatives. For example, you know, we have uh, formalized few things during COVID pandemic, like we dealt with how the vaccine supply chain has to be dealt in whole India. Uh, that's one example. And the second one is we recently worked with Andhra Pradesh government, how to tackle something called antimicrobial resistance. I'm, I'm sure everybody might be taking antibiotics at one point of time, you know, whenever there is an infection or uh, your family, or if you are eating chicken or, or something, they all are treated with antibiotics. Because of taking that, we are next pandemic that is about to come in our in our lives is antimicrobial resistance, because antibiotics will stop working at one point. They are very old. I mean, the discovery of antibiotics happened way back in maybe a century ago, and we are still following the same. 
and the bacteria become so intelligent and they, then, then we are encountering antimicrobial resistance. So WHO said that this will be the next pandemic. That's where every government is pushing how to overcome antimicrobial resistance. And we helped Andhra Pradesh government to have its own implementation plan, like, uh, you know, how to basically uh, uh, when prescribe antibiotics to patients or how to basically treat chicken and everything. So that's one example. And we do big events like in Hyderabad. There are many lots of central institutes and, and pharma companies. So we made them come together promoting in academia industry knowledge. So these are a few events that I want to show. And there's a next one, which you are all part of today is FABA Academy. So FABA Academy is all about helping students to get either upskill on skills or otherwise getting them jobs. So it was launched in 2020 to brainly bridge the gap between industry and academia by, by running workshops, webinars, a lot of skill development programs, hands-on trainings, conferences, job placements, finishing school, which you're actively building now. And, and one of the program that is hard to overfall is that women empowerment in life sciences, because sciences are very dry subjects. And, and we, we have a couple of programs to help everybody who are in need in this, in this stream. So uh, a couple of them are very, uh, you know, very uh, our own projects, like, you know, drug discovery and development, which is one of the unique one for our FABA. A uh, couple of others, which you'll get to know if you subscribe to our newsletter or if you are in the FABA Friday WhatsApp group. And, uh, you know, soft skills also we do, right? We Before we used to do workshops, but now we are covering through FABA Fridays. So let me talk about FABA Fridays, and which is very important that everybody here understand what FABA Fridays concept is. So Faber Friday's concept basically is a, is a get together, weekly get together on a particular topic. And it's, it's not about topic, it's about peer to peer mentoring. Peer to peer mentoring, when I say that if you know something, you could be my mentor. If you do not know something, then you could be mentee. So in the group, everybody here, it's all a collaborative group that we want to build. It's a, it's a community where we all help each other as a simple mentor mentee interactions. So we have to collaboratively help each other. We, we, you can, we can help you directly applying for a job or otherwise you can upskill yourself whether through the courses that are run in FABA Fridays or otherwise FABA Finishing School. So a couple of ground rules are there when you come to FABA Fridays. We really want you to be positive. We want you to be proactive. So you need to turn on your cameras and microphones. If you're not, I think we'll be seeing, we'll be observing you for a couple of weeks and afterwards you'll be, you'll be kicked out. There's no point having somebody who turn on, who comes here and just for attendance sake, they are here and then they go. And also, moreover, we go, we don't give any certificates or anything. And we want you to be collaborative. We want to be to really open up and start building community. So like that, we have been doing it. So we started June 2nd, 2023 on CV writing. And fortunately, we have done 10 Faber Fridays so far. And 11th one now we are we are having with Dr. Raman Jain on personal branding for successful career. So that's that's like a Faber Academy. So these are a couple of statistics that I was talking to Dr. Raman when he joined. So we have, uh, people are joining from 19 countries. So 100 plus people are there every week, either on LinkedIn or Zoom or everything. And we have a thousand plus audience so far came. This is this is like a very interesting graph that I have never seen, but that one of our intern has pulled out. So we have various backgrounds from PhD to industries. All these people are joining from over 150 universities. So I think 180 universities now with the last Faber Friday. So uh, one of the event that you all have to be aware that we will be doing is called Career Connect uh, in collaboration with somebody called Anal Analytica Anacon India. They will be displaying 400 analytical instruments on September 16th here in Hyderabad. And on that day, we will be doing live hiring. We, are, we will be inviting a couple of pharma companies. Their HR managers will be doing live hiring. You can come here. You can, uh, If you are interested, you can apply for a couple of jobs or otherwise you can see how the live interview happens. And 400 analytical instruments, they will be doing live demo sessions. You can participate and see how the instruments can be used or otherwise how you can get jobs in those companies. You, we will be doing a CV clinic where we'll be going over through your CVs and see how it happens. And one interesting aspect is that we'll be also doing a uh, professional photography sessions where you can get a professional picture for your LinkedIn or CV and, and everything is for free. So we are not going to charge a single dime on for students. So we last week we launched something called Faber Recruit. Thank you for many, thank you many of you who have applied for the jobs. So there are many pharma companies and startups who are coming to us and asking like, do you have this skill set in your people? And and that's why we launched this Faber Recruit where people can get internships, jobs, projects, or even scholarships. So that's about the second wing and the last wing, which which will not finish Faber is Faber Entrepreneurship. So startups are something are which is which is very close to Faber's heart is that empowering startups. 
So the bio startups in India are are not so rock stars as your you know IT startups or tech startups because the grant availability is so limited because the runway for biotech startups is very difficult and that's where Faba Entrepreneurship has stepped in. We launched last year 2022 with an event called Whale Tank. If you know Shark Tank, we went a bit above. We invited venture capitalists and helped over 60 startups getting connected to venture capitalists. We do a lot of co-creation entrepreneurship awareness events. We do design thinking workshops. And our overall objective is to make startups investment ready. And we are also having, a, we are we are aiming to make our own fund where we want to co-invest in startups. We provide mentoring and business scaling services. We provide regulatory services, clinical trials and marketing. And also based on startup requirements, we provide connections. So overall, these are the statistics of FABA. So we, from 2020, we helped over 12,000 individuals that could be upskilling them through courses or providing them jobs. We had 100 plus webinars and workshops. We have a really good team of uh, executive committee board members, and we have around 22 international chapters. So a lot of upcoming programs are there. We'll put you, we'll we'll put that in the in our group. A couple of them you can join. A couple of them you cannot because they are exclusively for the people who are working in either in in the specific industry like plant biotechnology or vaccine manufacturing. These things we'll we'll keep you posted. So in a, in a nutshell, Faba basically is a big network with several people coming from uh, various uh, domains. And with that network, we launched FABA Academy for human resource development, connecting academia and industry, or FABA entrepreneurship, again, connecting academia and industry through startups. So that's it. And uh, so you could you can support FABA. Like last week, somebody took membership. So we are a nonprofit. We don't really aim to raise a lot of money, but but you know we have to run our engine. So you can propose an initiative, you can take, you can support, you can donate or sponsor FABA. When you donate, you also get tax benefits because we have ATG certification where 50% of your money can be refunded. You can take membership for students, it's only 1,000 rupees. For companies, 1,000 rupees per year. For companies, is a bit above, a bit high. You can join the team. You can join as a volunteer. FABA has a lot of volunteers. We are doing a lot of good programs like we will be doing podcasts and everything. You can provide mentorships to our students or you can provide access to the resources. So these are the fees, as, you, as I said, you know, 11,000 uh, rupees is for students plus GST and for individual 2,360 annually or for lifetime, it is uh, 23,600 or like that, it depends. So uh, I think it's not relevant here. That's it, basically. That's that's FABA. So I hope you understood what FABA is. So we really want you to step up your game, either work with FABA or get help through FABA. And uh, right now, now the I, I would like to invite Dr. Raman to take over and also I would like to invite Divya to first introduce Dr. Raman and then let's go forward. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. So uh, let me quickly introduce you, our uh, today's speaker, Dr. Raman. Uh, Dr. Raman Jain is currently the Vice President, Corporate HR at uh, Sterling Holiday Resorts Limited with a background that includes work experience at AB in Bev. Strides Pharma, Lee, Wrangler, and Vance. He brings strong expertise in talent management, development, leadership development, learning analytics, organizational development, and more. So he holds a doctoral program, uh, fellow in management from the IIM Kashipur. And he has also been involved in talent development and management, organizational development, change management, HR communications, and HR analytics in previous roles and whatnot. It's a, a privilege to introduce you, sir. Please uh, take over. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jagdish and Divya. Uh, so one last time, let me give it a try. Can I request all of you to come on video if you want to encourage me? Uh, I will uh, crack a very uh, mini ethnic joke, which is, uh, see, I'm a Marwadi, right? So uh, uh, wherever I see there are possibilities of uh, more avenues, there I speak more. And wherever I have a very sustu audience, which is, okay, let's see, let's relax. Then I cut short my purpose by 50%. So uh, if you want uh, uh, me to give you more, then give you more as in not talk a lot, but give you something more resourceful, then do come on camera and uh, uh, be a real part of the session. Of course, uh, in one of my previous sessions, one of them said, Aman, we don't know what you're going to give. So do you want to give a sample? And then we'll think if we really want to you know, switch on the cameras, absolutely fine. Happy to uh, go that way. So before we uh, move on to uh, the session itself, 
Uh, let me ask a question, which is, so all of you are able to, can you see my screen? Yes, no, maybe? Not yet, sir. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. All right. So, uh, I'm hoping you all can see my Mentimeter screen. Can I request all of you to switch on your, uh, your, I mean, pick your mobile devices. And if you can key in the website, which is menti.com, use the code 4442613. and three. Use your mobile device. Log into this URL, menti.com and put the code and key in your responses. This way I'll know out of 35 people, how many of them are really attending my session. It's a simple question, easy question, easy peasy. How do you feel today? Bad, just okay, good, excellent, fantastic. Let's go for party. I think take a note who is uh, who is not active there. <laughs> no one for the party. Oh my god. See, yeah. party does not mean going to discotheque. Huh? Party can be Saturday yet. So <laughs> ah, okay. So largely people are feeling good. Uh, but that is out of six people. Can we have some more responses? People. Pick up your mobile devices. Come on. So I think people are typing here and uh, in, the, in the Zoom chat, uh, Dr. Raman. So maybe oh. yeah, click on mentimeter.com and click on the code. Yeah, people, if you can do that, because uh, in some time I'll not be able to see the chat box. Ah, so now I have number of people increasing responses. I'm hoping people are not giving multiple responses. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. <clears throat> All right. So now the, if you notice the uh, spider chart has uh, kind of tapered and is trending more towards good and excellent. I will uh, try my best to make it better than that. Uh, but yeah, that's the input variable, right? End of the day, output variable is what will matter. And uh, let's see how this goes. Here is a next question for all of you. Again, you will have to uh, um, use the same link, menti.com. And give me your responses. What's on your mind today? What do you want to pick from this session? Again, same thing, menti.com, key in your code, 4442613. And three. What's on your mind today? Wow, good. Six responses, eight responses. Wow, I like that response. Whoever is anime, you should personally connect with me. Gratitude, lovely. DNA, biotechnology, career excellence, increased collaboration, progress. Wow, 24 responses. Now is when I'm having fun. I'm feeling someone is listening to me, you see. A lot of them are telling gratitude and learning. Too much pressure on me to make that happen. <laughs> okay. Someone is feeling down. Come, let's talk. Uh, someone is feeling frustrated. Just take a break. Uh, and someone's written my name only. Aman. They are thinking of <laughs> Aman. Okay. Thank you. Namaste. 
uh good good uh, i'm i'm very happy that all of you are participating and you've given your responses definitely uh, makes a lot of difference for me to understand what's running on your mind um my um, agenda for today is going to be of course there's no rocket science that i'm going to pass on but i'm going to share uh, something that i feel has uh, helped me and many other leaders that i've worked with in their journey of building a brand for themselves right uh before i move forward um a quick question and i would request all of you uh to give verbal responses how so do you want a short or a long or a medium delivery it is in terms of time you can also put your responses in the chat box do you want a short a long a medium delivery okay i have my first response it says medium mm -hmm. <laughs> i like noor's response i hope i live up to it i live up to it i will try my best trying is all i can do absolutely prem raj it go it depends on how it goes i am trying to gauge how much time do i have so my understanding is i have like 20 to 30 minutes to make my point and step out right and if that is the case exactly the right time it is 6:30 and i will move into my uh, uh presentation let me know if you can see my deck can you all see my deck yep. yeah and is the animation playing yes no maybe yes yes, yes sir i think i missed clicking on uh, audio she is sound can you all see my screen yes yes okay. all right so uh, people now uh, my intent for today is to just make four five points but make it as meaningful as possible i will be using a wide range of methods but uh, largely i will try and make it as interactive as possible right um what's our purpose for today our purpose for today is understanding how do i craft my uh, uh personal brand and how do i make meaning there right and when i say i i'm not referring to aman i am referring to each one of you okay uh, every slide for that matter has some meaning not just the content that is there in it because the content i have kept limited to three four sentences everywhere but it's more about what is the picture depicting and what am i going to share around the context right so here it goes let me share a small story about myself uh, which should give you a fair understanding of uh, who i am as a person uh, i am a learning fanatic when i say learning i am very enthusiastic and uh, excited to understand human behaviors uh, learning behaviors what encourages a person to learn or not learn uh what motivates teams what motivates a group of people to work together so all of these for me put together makes me a learning navigator the other one is capacity cultivator which is how do i build solutions that are scalable how do i build uh, hr teams that are scalable how do i build organizations that are sustainable so a lot of work around building organizations and that's around capacity cultivator 
more importantly by qualification i am an engineer i did my mba in hr and education from symbiosis and mysore university and like uh, our friend shared earlier uh, my doctoral which is phd is from iim kashipur which is in uh, organizational behavior so by qualification it is i am an engineer or a management this thing by passion uh, i am into uh, talent development which is learning and development and by uh, uh, sure uh, mere mere genuine intent uh, i work with a lot of uh, communities uh, in enabling them with necessary learning infrastructure digital infrastructure to move ahead from wherever they are and that's what uh, makes me social entrepreneur so these are my pursuits in life and i really feel belong to these pursuits and i'm sure each one of you will have some pursuits of your life irrespective of what is your age irrespective of what phase of life you are in i am sure you have some pursuits of yourself right so may i request all of you to pick up paper and a pen and if you don't have that immediately available maybe a mobile device and if you can make a note of one or two things that you want to pursue in your life to that will make you happy that will make you contented can you go ahead and do that and uh, if you think it's a lot you can always share your responses on the chat box i am waiting to read your chat box responses what are your pursuits what are your pursuits it can be anything big small for today for tomorrow is it a tough question for a few of you nice financial independence support rural employment wonderful lovely impact millions mentoring wonderful wonderful i really like the focus students okay i like kartik's response anything else people to be a world renowned scientist politician and humanity humanitarian wonderful and that's a journey right you move from one stage to another right helping every life science student to get a job or a phd so that they can get started and they can have their own startup to have progressive shift right get us our own house absolutely uh, uh it's always a dream right it's always a dream and it is very special for many of us and vinila says to be a spiritual being so look at the variety of responses we have right each one of us have a different pursuit each one of them has a different uh, direction in which we are looking at our pursuits and that's exactly what differentiates each one of us right with that a question that i'd like to uh, uh, ask all of you is if that is your pursuit are you headed there and in that context if you know your pursuit then don't you think there is a lot that you know about your purpose or for that matter your brand statement right uh before i move forward there is a very important submission that i want to make and the submission is people often what happens is when we say personal brand it is taken from an extrinsic angle which is personal brand is always for people outside people around me and it is not so much for me right my submission there is it's both sides i will need to know what my personal pursuit is purpose is to know myself better which is self awareness or self actualization if so and that is intrinsic by nature personal branding is extrinsic by nature it is what i want people to know of me how do i want to contribute and how do i want to look at the pursuits that we just mentioned in the chat box at large right 
so uh, before even i move ahead i just wanted to differentiate that there are in intrinsic and extrinsic factors each one of us have our own pursuits and we'll have to see how do we go about it and how do we make meaning out of it okay here is an interesting uh, example of a personal Where is this from? We are from CBI. Donation name matter. He disease so chinna walu pilli pilli laga undar. Okay, people. Who? What is this about? Who is this about? <laughs> Jailer movie. <laughs> Jailer movie. And who are we talking about? Rajni Khan. <laughs> Rajni Khan. How many of you know Rajini Kant here? Can I see hands up? Use your raise hand button, and if you can raise hands, how many of you know Rajini Kant? Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Absolutely. Who doesn't? Everyone would know. Everyone would know, and a lot of people tell everyone should know, right? Question to all of you: What about Rajini Kant clicks for you? his humorism yes his you style know, style right there is that class to the style any other responses absolutely i like ruchi's response nothing is impossible for rajinikanth like uh, one of them uh, uh, tweeted uh, yesterday or day before generally a lot of indian actors would want their movies to be released on a holiday but here rajni has launched his movie on a day and that day has become a holiday in most of the states at least southern states in the country right and uh, that's exactly what rajni is known for i like the last response what prasad gave he is grounded he realistic and hence that's the class apart dina chitni leda aina inna unnay kada edo okade tenandi edo oka roju break padaledu ani guddesi 5000 fine kattesi pota tadelna puliga martar So people verbal responses how do you feel when you watch this video what what are your feelings i'm not asking thinking i'm asking feelings mm. feelings no? i think the personal branding he had before no i think he changed it <laughs> yeah absolutely first time can you expect that style and that class from any other actors in south india of course there are regional actors across but the fan that rajini has is just the next level right and when he walks everyone stands right i was in the theater yesterday for the first day first show and what i saw was one of its kind in my life the way people rush into the cinema theaters to watch his movie two carrying separate chairs foldable chairs close to 100 of them because tickets are not available and sitting in the front front gandhi class plus getting 10 rucksacks of flowers and showering it on him every time he comes on the screen and that's the personal brand rajini has built for himself and for people at large i have a team member he says you know why rajini hasn't joined politics because he doesn't want to cheat people look at the line and look at the interpretation this team member of mine has he talks about what rajini stands for right and hence what therefore he gets as love and respect is this
Now, the intent of sharing this was one, this is the latest thing happening in India, right? Uh, and I'm sure even abroad, because there are this movie is being uh, showcased in more than 8,000 screens across the world and 2,000 being abroad. So uh, not, this may not be the scene outside India so much, but uh, at least India and non-PVR, yes, this is what we uh, get to see and experience. And that's exactly a personal brand that he's built for himself. My point there is, what's really a personal brand? What do we tell, what do we define or depict as a personal brand? Open question, people, verbal responses, please. It'll be great if everyone uh, participates. This is something that people will recognize a person for. Like that's so unique about them that there is no Absolutely. other. Yes, yeah. something unique about that person. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks. Okay, what else people? Now I have to tell the title of this slide. Why this color verity? Why no responses? We have three answers in the chat box. Your identity, your trademark. Wonderful, yeah. Uh, identity, trademark, and? Unique identity. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, if I were to uh, break down this context of personal brand, according to me, it's all about, yes, your identity, like all of you picked, something that is very unique about you and the ideas and the stories that you're selling to people out there. It can be an idea or a story about yourself or about others or about a context. And those ideas and stories, what kind of social influence does it have on self and others? And therefore, what kind of thinking, feeling and acting is going into it for people to embrace it? So according to me, personal brands is all about the stories that I have for people. Look at Insta Reels. What is Insta Reels? Insta Reels is about their story. Now the story can be coming out in the form of a music, a song, a dance, a dialogue, an act, right? But it's, an, it's a story. It's, it's, a, it's a formulative story, right? Which they are trying to communicate something to the audience out there. And that's, according to me, a personal brand, right? And this personal brand, therefore, has uh, multiple contexts to it. What I will be doing is, I will start with asking a few questions to understand where do we stand today, and then give a few easy ideas on how can we go about finding responses to a few important questions, which will help me build a personal brand, right? The first question, what's your story that you want the world to hear about? What is your story? Keen your responses in the chat box. And I'm going with the chat box because that seems to be the uh, uh, easiest uh, response system. <clears throat> but yeah, happy if anyone wants to give in responses verbally as well. What is your story? If you were to put it in three to four lines, what is your story that you want the world to know? What is your story or what is your idea that you want the world to look at, understand and make meaning of? Nice. Thank you, uh, Indu, for responding. Thanks, Jagdish. I like Prem Raj's response. Is like Prem, Prem Raj, I think, is on fire after after seeing uh, Rajnikanth's video. Rajnikanth's trailer, absolutely, I agree. I agree. <laughs> In fact, it's very magical to see Rajnikanth was a Maharashtrian. He came into Bangalore. He lived in J.P. Nagar in Bangalore, 
and he was a bus driver there sorry bus conductor, conductor. there and then he got his magic chance and here he is today he is in a platform where he walks and lakhs of people just stand up merely because he is there i like uh, uh, vivek's response and that's the truth of the day right a life of peace in chaos vuka volatility uncertainty complexity ambiguity and amidst all of this i just want the two minutes of peace so that i can be in peace yes right so if all of you notice um a few of us may have answer to this question which is what's my story and a few of us may not even have answer to this question if not now i would definitely invite all of you to spend some time later whenever you think you are in peace and draft your answer of what story of yours you want the world to speak you want the world to hear because that's a very important piece when it comes to building a personal brand right what am i now along absolutely and there is no better platform than toastmasters in do uh it just allows you to to be yourself and know yourself more and more uh, uh it is magical is all i can say voice to the voiceless absolutely thank you thank you story of brevity courage confidence story of resilience great story of belief right uh ruin the beautiful future absolutely nita nitya so so i i am liking that we are now slowly progressing towards putting in more responses and please uh, keep them coming in um the the my deck is going to be something similar in nature and uh, we are going to head uh, slowly right so hence if that is going to be your story then the next question that you have to answer is what is your or what are your usps unique selling proposition why should people know you know your brand be affiliated to your brand <coughs> what are those three words what is your unique selling proposition and when i ask that what i mean is if if aman wants to ensure all of you in this forum are listening to him what would his unique selling propositions be what is aman selling you well do you want to answer that question first i think that may help us understand the word unique selling proposition a little better what do you think is aman's unique selling proposition what is really working well when you are interacting with aman today here go ahead put in your keywords it can be a positive or a negative no problem like one of them said brevity mm hmm okay expertise experience empathy vision and clarity kindness engaging the audience okay 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 i'm assuming those are uh, responses of a few people also uh, but but good words coming in keep flowing let's take another minute let's put the usps if you are putting my usp then you'll have to write aman so that i know it is my usp if you are putting your usp then you don't have to write my name thanks indu the question the the people the question was what are your usps that you would want to sell right now many times we uh, misunderstand the word sell and uh, we feel we are genuinely selling but selling is essentially convincing someone to act according to something or think according to something or feel according to something and that's a unique selling proposition wonderful wonderful noor i really like your response act as a catalyst thanks uh, sasrika 
So I'll move forward, assuming uh, you've given me approx 30 minutes and then we will see if I'm not able to finish in 30. Uh, we we uh, move okay. forward based on uh, um, the mood factor, right? So main point that I wanted to make when I asked those questions was, boss, you are the CEO of your own brand. And having answers to these questions, which is what is your pursuit? What is your story that you want to sell? What are your USPs? Is your baby, right? And if you want the world to hear you out, to think on what you're speaking, what you're making as a point, then you better get charged, take charge as the CEO of your brand. And first thing is identify your USP, your story. Personal branding is all about the stories that you talk that makes a difference to the other person. Now, makes a difference can have multiple connotations, but the direction and the angles of stories that you want to pick and talk about is a choice you got to make, right? And hence, being the CEO, you'll have to take charge, right? So, more importantly, it is okay if they are simple things. It is okay if it is making sense to you. You don't have to look at a Nobel Prize element in any form. It can be simple and it's absolutely fine. And when I say simple, I'm referring to your pursuit being simple, your purpose being simple, your uh, uh, thought process being simple, your USB being simple. That is absolutely fine. Coke is just soda. Tylenol, just acetaminophen. And Levi's are just jeans. Yet consumers go out of their way to select these specific brands over others. An economist would say, how is this possible? that a rational consumer would be willing to pay more for exactly the same thing. We love to think about ourselves as rational. That's not how it works. A very famous study done by colleagues at Duke University had flashed either the Apple logo or the IBM logo to two randomized groups of participants. The study found that after being subliminally exposed to the Apple logo, compared to when you've been exposed to the IBM logo, participants performed better on creative tasks. And the argument is that Apple has been telling you this story over and over again, that Apple is the brand for hip, cool, fun, creative people. This is the true power of brands. They can influence our behavior in ways that extend way beyond the point of sale. So, to what degree can the influence of brands wreak havoc on our ability to make rational spending decisions? This is Your Brain on Money. This is Americus Reed. He studies identity and marketing at the University of Pennsylvania. When I make choices about different brands, I'm choosing to create an identity. When I put that shirt on, when I put those shoes on, those jeans, that hat, someone is going to form an impression about what I'm about. So if I'm choosing Nike over Under Armour, I'm choosing a kind of different way to express affiliation with sport. The Nike thing is about performance. The Under Armour thing is about the underdog. I have to choose which of these different conceptual pathways is most consistent with where I am in my life. And once a consumer makes that choice, their relationship with a brand can deepen to the point where they identify with the brand like family. And once you identify with a brand, it can shape the way you behave. And it's really interesting because they will also, if someone talks bad about that product, brand, or service, they will be the first to go out and defend. Why? Because an attack on the brand is an attack on themselves. Michael Platt is a professor of neuroscience, marketing, and psychology whose research demonstrates how our perception of brands influences our decisions. There's an idea in marketing, which is that we relate to brands in the same way we relate to people. It's like, I love this brand, or I hate this brand. Of course, what people say right, can often be different from what's really going on in their heads. So we thought, well, why don't we just ask the brain directly? Michael and his team observed the brains of iPhone users and Samsung Galaxy users with an MRI machine while they heard good, bad, and neutral news about Apple and Samsung. Apple customers showed a brain empathy response 
toward Apple that was exactly what you'd see in the way you would respond to somebody in your own family. Strangely, Samsung users didn't have any positive or negative responses when good or bad news was released about their brand. The only evidence that Samsung users showed was reverse empathy for Apple news, meaning if the Apple headline was negative, their brain reflected a positive response. You know, it really... So in the, uh, with the intent to move forward and complete, I'll pause this video, but yes, this video is available uh, on YouTube as well. So you can always, uh, those of you who are interested can watch the entire video and understand uh, how brands and how identity, uh, building an identity plays a very important role in uh, building your own personal brand, right? So personal brand, like I mentioned, is uh, all about self-impression, your perception about self. And hence, it's very important that you first deal with it. If you remember in the initial uh, remarks of mine, I did make a mention of it, which is self-impression is one of the critical pieces. And uh, that plays an important role in the way you build a personal brand or make meaning of what it really means for you to have a personal brand. The second one is your state of mind um, and, and making it a priority, which is what state of mind to operate in, what to really make meaning in terms of personal brand is a critical piece. And the third one is your USP. Who are you? What do you do? And what makes you unique? So if you notice, three, four words are constantly moving in and out, which is uh, uniqueness, identity, USP, and uh, self-impression in some which way, right? Uh, before we move forward, are we all good? Can I move forward? Um, um, can you give me a heads up in terms of 20? If you can tell me yes, no, maybe I'll move forward. Yes, yes. Okay. So people, what I'm going to do now is uh, share some simple steps that you can make use of to build a personal brand, right? Uh, these are simple steps, but uh, they are uh, sequential one after the other. And what I'm sharing is just the basics. So for those of you who want to start a channel, for those of you who want to just be there on LinkedIn and build a, a professional network, for those of you who want to be a thought leader, each one of you may have your own purpose for reason why you want to have a personal brand. These are the four steps that you can use and build one, right? Uh, step number one, discover your brand, which is answering a couple of questions that I asked some time ago and a couple of questions that will come a little ahead. Second is develop your brand, which is having the purpose and therefore working in that direction. It could be content. It could be your actions. It could be the kind of events you do the kind of events you participate in. It could be the language. It could be your scholastic nature, right? Third one is communicating your brand, which is talking about it again and again in different forums, in different forms. And finally, sustaining your brand, which is the most important thing when it comes to building a personal brand. You know why? In a lot of josh, in a lot of excitement, we go ahead and start something. But after five days, it is, the intent is gone, the energy is gone, the excitement is gone somewhere else. And then the brand that we thought of to build just five days ago is now a FOMO topic whenever it comes back again, right? So there are multiple uh, uh, psychological patterns. There. A few start, a few end, a few cannot be consistent. A few want to start, but are hesitant because they're afraid of how, what will the world perceive of them and many things like that. But trust me, um, it's always good to first work on the first two, which is discovering and developing. And only when you're sure and confident is when you move ahead with communicating and sustaining. I have done this uh, for a couple of individuals uh, as personal uh, coaching assignment. I've done this for organizations and each of these journeys have their own, uh, you know, uh, pros and cons, their own uh, ups and downs, which one has to go through. Every picture, like I told, has meaning and hence I want you to be there in completeness. 
I hope uh, you're able to see the next slide, which is discover your brand. Yes, no, maybe. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So discover your brand. First one is personal insights. What do I feel about myself? What is my goal? What is my driver? What are my values? And what is my USP? Unique selling proposition. And you will see the word USP will become something else in some time, right? Talk to others, understand what, where are the places where you're able to add value, right? How do others describe you? What are the three compliments people make about you? Not just to you, but even to others, right? And what about you, what about you creates a wow factor for others? When you walk in, when you sit by, when you just look at them, what is that aha moment that you're able to create? And these are a few aspects that you can pivot things around to build your personal brand. Aman, can I find this in one hour? Can I find the answers to all these questions in 10 days? Boss, it really depends on are you looking for breadth? Are you looking for depth? Generally, personal branding is a depth exercise. You have to spend time, you have to think through and you should be sure. Because what you start is what you will be there for a longer time, right? Personal brand is not a one day episode. You ate masala dosa today and it is done. It is something that you have to consistently do. It is like drinking water. It is like drinking your milk or a chai or a coffee, right? So that is discovering your brand and it's a most critical uh, uh, piece. For example, I have been waiting to kickstart my podcast, but I'm not able to identify a topic that is unique and that people can resonate with me on, right? So it, I want to rather take time, get the right topic and then start my podcast. I don't want to do a YouTube channel. I don't want to do a, a video series, but just a podcast, a simple listening element. And people will know, oh, Aman, his talks are there, but what is really more magical is his podcast. So I would prefer, I mean, when I'm talking about my personal brand and the kind of impact I want to leave, I want to bring in that unique element of what people will really resonate with me on, with the kind of modes that I'm available on. The next one is develop your brand. Imagine why I've put the, the background I've put, because it's all about developing, right? It's all about figuring. It's all about recording. It's all about putting it together. And hence, identify your target audience, understand, pick up, rack your brain and pick the right audience that you really want to cater to. You don't know the audience, you're just in a josh to do something, then yeah, it is just a small game of kabaddi. You will play, the other side will uh, play their seven slots, you'll play your seven slots and whatever. But is it going to be longer game, sustained energy, sustained journey? I don't think so. The second one, which is exactly what I spoke about, USP, has to become a unique value proposition. If you're on Insta Reels, why should people listen to you? If you're on YouTube, why should people listen to you or watch you? If you're on podcast, why should people listen to you? What is it you're bringing to their life, which is very unique, that is not available in this data intensive world and data invasive world? What is that you're bringing to table, which is not available today? Why should people listen to you? Are you the go-to person for something? And if that's something you're aware of, look at it to put it in the list of, okay, this can be an area that I should work on. And what are those five personal attributes about you? that people look for, that people seek help from of you. When you know all of these and when you put this together, you will have a lot more clarity around what is your brand, which was the previous exercise, and developing your brand, right? Uh, people, it is 7-6. I had told 30 minutes. I am already on 36 minutes. Let me know if I can move forward. Uh, otherwise, I will pause uh, uh, in a minute or two. I think I have another 12 to 15 minutes to cover if there is time. Yeah, sure. Uh, you can uh, continue, Dr. Sure. All right. So uh, we have discovered the brand. We have discovered, developed the brand by knowing these uh, factors or attributes. And then comes, what was the third one, people? Verbal responses. Let me see how many of you are still awake. Discover your brand, develop your brand. Third one. Communicate. Very good. Thank you. Communicating your brand, right? So 
before we move on to communicating your brand there is one other thing that you'll have to do as a part of uh, discovering yourself and developing a brand which is under have a strategy have a plan in place also understand competition a lot of times people tell okay i want to do self help in stories i want to become the second gor gopal das of this world but they don't know there are 40 others who are already doing it and hence uniqueness may not come in third you should be an achiever achiever not in the context of uh, um, people appreciating in the context of you being one of the best right and whatever you create as content whatever attributes you have as a personal brand see personal brand i'm only referring to social media at this point in time but personal brand can be lot more than that right and that's where who comes into picture which is win others over over what you are specialist for what you have a unique identity about right and more importantly everything needs to have a positive connotation so positivity that you spread when people come and walk to you the third one like you all uh, shared is communicating your brand you need to have a communication plan whatever is your personal brand let's say you have a logo where will you use your logo when will you use your logo how often will you use your logo let's say it's your voice how will you use it how do you want people to under, uh, interpret your voice when it is your video your visual how do you want people to you know interpret your visual your body language do you want them to see you as someone guarded do you want them to see you as free flowing do you want to do you want them to see you as someone who's easy to speak and communicate with all of these factors communication plan is also about how much time do you want to spend how much time do you want to give to a certain purpose communication plan is also about monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday what when how where why all of these all the w's and h's should take care of your communication plan what's your audience and what is the vehicle vehicle is direct vehicle indirect vehicle social media non social media meetings conferences representations back end front end all of these are different vehicles and personal brand can be anything at all it's just what you define uh don't assume personal brand is only when you come on insta reel you are a personal brand sorry no not really today i don't do insta reels i don't do youtube uh channels because i don't think uh that's that's my uh, identity my identity is people come to me because they want to talk to me and i would rather have personal conversations and retain those relationships than uh uh make something very social by nature and that's my perspective right timelines and why and then more important and that's the most important thing clarity consistency constancy right clarity of your thoughts consistency is frequency when you want it constancy is maintain a rhythm if you visit uh um for example gaur gopal das's insta reels or for example himanshu rai i am uh, indore director his linkedin account if you watch uh, um uh, arnab goswami's news channel there is clarity in their own ways of course we may not we may like someone we may not like someone which is a personal choice but there is clarity they have consistency and they have constancy and each one of them are a brand in themselves including our dear pm modi our her highness president draupadi murmu our cgi our governor our chief ministers our cricketers ms dhoni virat kohli pv sindhu each one of them are a brand and each one of them communicate with the audience in a certain pattern and that's not by fluke it's by plan there is strategy there is a plan in place you can go back and check all these factors right with that to maintain or sustain your brand what is really important is first google yourself where you are today right and based on your plan please be consistent you are on in josh today you do 500 things today 
and tomorrow if you are like a cracker which has no energy then it doesn't make sense it's just one of activity and i call it a happy birthday party aao khao jao come eat and go right and anything which is not consistent will not have a certain value assess your brand every time and again ask others how are you doing don't get into this over confidence zone where i know everything i will achieve everything i don't have to ask others that's wrong and more importantly evolve every time so that you are relevant to the audience right so that's about sustaining your brand and uh, uh, all of these when you do all these four which is discover your brand develop your brand communicate your brand and sustain your brand is when you are able to put you are able to build a personal brand for yourself have i spoken anything uh, uh, out of the world no i don't think so did i want to no i did not want to the intent was to just refurbish the purpose and tell that boss this is something very simple you just have to put the right energy and put it consistently and you can build a brand right uh faba for that matter is a brand it's not a personal brand it's a social brand it's a community brand uh um and faba has multiple identities now multiple identities is to serve multiple purposes but yes faba has its audience very clear right faba has its uh, timelines of events very clear faba has its direction very clear and that's what an i an identity a purpose plan or purpose statement should do right so with that uh the last part is networking you being a personal brand and you only being in social media <laughs> is no results uh, to a larger extent let me be honest you have to be visible to people you have to make relationships you have to meet people you have to greet people you have to talk to them you have to have a conversation it's okay you don't know their area it's okay you don't know who they are it's okay you don't know how high level they are if at all that matters attempt try fail and it's absolutely okay but move forward main point i'm not just referring to the social media angle i'm also referring to the in person angle which is all about networking networking with the right set of people and when you network with the right set of people what's important is you selling yourself you have to be resourceful networking is all about oh uh, uh, you want someone who can talk on motivation who can talk on what's required for team development i know this guy uh, his name is dr aman he apparently was a speaker at faba and if you think uh, that's your purpose you can actually reach out to him he's available on linkedin do you want me to connect you to him this is being resourceful like some time ago before even we started uh, dr jagdish was talking to uh, one of the uh, scholars uh, or or professors from nigeria and he said oh do you want uh, have you have you been able to get through and there was a challenge posed and he said we can figure out a way within this community and we can help you uh, solve your challenge but yes we'll have to reach out to them right this is being resourceful and between both of them which is selling yourself and being resourceful be genuine don't faff around oh you want to talk to rajinikan just a minute i know him really well and then you pick up the phone just to faff and tell i'm not able to reach but yes i'll connect you so such faffs don't work so be genuine right uh, that's a quick snapshot about how to craft your personal brand uh, aman this was conceptual can you give us ideas yes uh i see a lot of you here are from uh, specialist backgrounds and specialist is always uh, uh you know con connotated with depth um so when it is depth then it is about thought leadership so the talks articles research papers events around research papers more and more academia industry interfaces all of these will build a personal brand you need to know your subject really well you need to speak really well if you cannot speak today it's absolutely fine but yeah like my mother says boss if you want to learn cycle you have to pick the cycle you have to go onto the ground and you have to fall down 500 times and only then you get your cycling really well so if that's the basic logic we've used 
uh, many, many years ago to learn cycle. It's the same logic again here. Go out there, talk to people, engage. It's okay if you fail. Pick your learning from there, move on from there. Just chill. Like one of them said, stay in peace and live like a king till the time you live. And therefore, living like a king requires you to not regret. With that, I'm... Uh, can I request you to go on mute, please? iPhone 13. Uh, with that, um, yes, uh, this is all I wanted to share today. A short one. Uh, but I think um, even if each one of you have been able to pick uh, three, four uh, takeaways from today's session, uh, that's, that's uh, a, a good uh, step forward. Uh, we can always revive any time. Uh, this is my QR to the LinkedIn. Uh, please uh, scan and uh, definitely reach out to me uh, for anything and everything uh, that you think I can be of uh, support. I will try and reply as early as possible. Uh, but you see managing uh, corporate HR for an organization like Resort, uh, Sterling Resorts, uh, uh, 45 plus resorts, 2,500 plus employees. Uh, there is a possibility that I may be busy. But yes, I make it a point that I reply back to everyone who wants to get in touch with me. Uh, with that, uh, I will open the floor for any questions that you may have. And uh, uh, yes, uh, we can always uh, uh, exchange uh, what is your key learning takeaway. Sorry, uh, key learning takeaway uh, in the chat box and I'll be happy to read them towards the end. Over to... Uh, uh, you people for questions and uh, if you're getting late yeah we can do the word of thanks uh, should should that be the way forward I'll pause here excellent Aman. thank you so much so I mean let's open up the floor for questions or interactions or anything so uh, maybe Aman, can you stop sh sharing your screen yeah people did you scan the QR code otherwise Divya can you pull out Aman's LinkedIn profile and put it here, the link in the chat box. Yeah. Start interacting now. Happy to see Ruchi ma'am here, Prasad sir. I like I like your surname, Sri Rama Kavacham. So you are oh, like you. Rama you. Kavacham. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dr. Raman, it has been a very uh, good session and you made it quite relevant by bringing in the uh, trailer of uh, Jailer. <laughs> That has been quite interesting and uh, you really set the context uh, very well. The beginning was wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, Prasad. I have a question. So, um, I want, uh, because you have a great experience in HR and all, most of our audiences are based out of, they are, uh, they are, they are budding in their careers. Like they are doing their BSc in life sciences or be it tech biotechnology or M tech in biotechnology or something like that. So, uh, do you uh, have you? Uh, can you give any uh, 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 your thoughts on how to uh, uh, take the interviews or how to excel in their uh, uh, interviews or something like that? Uh, you're on mute. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, in fact, when I was uh, listening to uh, the initial brief, I got reminded of my stint with Strides Pharma, uh, which is uh, a group company, right? Multiple pharma companies, uh, for example, Stellis Pharma, Aurobindo, uh, Arcolab, and many other uh, pharma companies in there. Uh, so I'm assuming that's the similar genre of people uh, who may be a part of this uh, forum. Um, <clears throat> see, interviews uh, has two sides to it. One is the interviewer and the other one is interviewee. Uh, I will take the interviewee angle now to respond to this question uh, in short. Um, there are three types of people. One, who know their stuff really well. Uh, and when I say stuff, I'm referring to subject knowledge, functional capability. 
but uh, behavioral uh, angle is where uh, uh, they may be lacking i mean or, or it's a work work in progress right the other one is uh, very good at functional very good at behavioral and can respond to any question uh if they uh, don't have an answer then the third one is functional behavioral third one is tactical right um, tactical is where all the jugards come into picture all the adjustments all the uh, random responsiveness comes into picture the third one is uh no functional strong functional competency uh okay behavioral competency no tactical competency these are the three largely three categories of people so i will answer uh, the question now against each one of them because i am sure between all of us including me we may be one of them so strong functional low behavioral uh, low tactical it is important that you understand the question and bring in the emotional intelligence elements for example acknowledging the question uh, and you can't acknowledge every question by the way but two three questions that you think are are slightly above a certain mark they are the interesting question i really like this question um um it's it's a question that uh, was in my mind that it may come up and i'm glad that you asked so when you are acknowledging the question have a smile because you acknowledge the question and you have a very ah oh, it's a very good question like this then it only means that uh, there is a trouble there and you may end up uh, you know uh, uh, responding in a undesired way so confidence and emotional intelligence when i say emotional intelligence acknowledging the other person's question appreciating the kind of questions they've asked if they've supported you in the interview process appreciate that and more importantly have a understanding of when to speak when not to speak how much to speak how much not to speak in fact how much to speak how much not to speak is one of the major work areas for a lot of freshers uh i am not telling that they don't know what to speak these days in a data invasive world everyone knows more than what they should know but how much to speak is what will build your brand your first impression in the call the second one is good functional good uh, behavioral and good tactical so everything they can but still not able to crack interview or there is that inertia that is required then it is about more and more practice sessions right uh, i remember in um, in uh, a couple of uh, universities uh, from my social enterprise which is called as zerv foundation we used to run um, uh, a program called as tuzzle uh, and that tuzzle revolved around mock interviews we only specialized in mock interviews or mock interview process aptitude test gds or uh, case study analysis and then interviews so i would get subject matter experts depending upon what university or what program it is from across the country and across the world fly them down bring them down to this university and we would run a 48 hour non stop no night no day mock interview process so especially uh, fresh graduates who are good at behavioral functional and tactical then practice is what is required uh it is okay to fail in the practice session than in the main session so find avenues find people uh and see if you can go through mocks the other one is exposure talk to industry leaders talk to people who have experience 5 6 7 years experience now they may not know functional skills as good as you it is okay they know they need not know but they know life seven years more than a fresh graduate and that experience you will not get in any bank be it money bank or any other bank i mean you people know better how what types of banks are available because it is from biotechnology background right experience is what is 
has to matter and when you talk to different people their experience comes to play i have this habit anywhere i go in fact i am more comfortable talking to unknown people than known people me being an introvert so everywhere i go i talk to unknown people okay who you are what do you do how do you do and things like that and every time i talk to people i learn something new i pick something new and that's my way of handling conversations because when you are good at functional behavioral and tactical then it's all about do you know how to handle conversations do you know how to talk to different type of people because you may be best at everything but if you don't know how to handle a conversation then it's still a uh, uh, not a great uh, idea the last one is low functional uh, uh, high behavioral low tactical low functional competency means uh, there is more uh, prep required any which ways but um, not all of us can go back to books and can again do the same msc same bsc right hence the only thing an hr expects and this is the only place i will wear a interviewer hat okay you don't know it today do you have the capability can you give me the confidence that you will learn in the next 15 days in the next 30 days and show me the evidence that you learned it because if you can't give me that confidence then i don't want to hire a person who will anyways then become a risk or become a liability so if someone does not have a capability and i look for that very genuinely i have new people joining in my hr team they don't know abc of hr but i look for one thing if i train this guy if i train this girl will she or he be ready in next 90 days the 90 days is a Uh, uh runway i give for anybody to be ready and anybody in that matter for that matter in any industry will give 90 days if that is the case do you have the confidence to learn anything under the sun and deliver so the last category of people if you give an essence and assurance note of assurance that i don't know this and i completely understand that i should have known this but you see i am happy and can guarantee that i will learn this and deliver you tell me how much time i have and i will so interviews have interviewees will have can be any of these three categories there can be more but i could largely categorize between the three and uh, these are the ways in which one can uh, handle interviews i see two people raising hands happy to take those questions yes hi, hi this is ruchi i have a question um in a society like india where self branding was never professed and we never never raised to self profess ourselves so is it something called too much branding uh, and uh, where is the thin line <laughs> or they, like uh, especially i think i feel uh, especially in case of say women academicians who often fail to network or who often fail to present themselves in the best light ever often like i think they they are the ones <laughs> who need some information like is it something like too much branding or like you're sounding too much about yourself right a uh, very good question i in fact was talking about it uh, two three days to go or two three days ago with one of my uh, uh, coaches so the world is quite open these days and hence the moment people are not receiving you the moment people are not subscribing to you the moment people are not liking you you have the indicator and that's the thin line uh, uh that's from a external world internal world you have to be con- conscious and you should be sure of what you're offering as value to the market out there if you are not sure then that is another thin line right like i'm not sure if i'm good to start a podcast do i know what needs to be done in a podcast yes do i have all the necessary infrastructure for a podcast i bought it 2 years ago i have two mics i have full background i have a, a soundproof room i have all of that but am i ready i don't think so and that's my thin line to make a choice so is there something called as too much branding yes there is but is there something that the external world can tell they will not tell directly because we are uh, it is india and we don't like having undesirable conversations but yes there are indicators and we should be very quick in picking up those indicators
Prasad, uh, uh, do you have a question? I'm sorry. I think that was uh, that was a hand which was raised some time back, and it was no I'm problem. Just lowering it. Bilal, thank you. Hi. Um, Can I? Uh, thank. You. Okay. Um, Go ahead, Bilal. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Jain, for the nice talk. Although I was a bit late, but because I'm uh, with the time difference, I'm living in Germany, so I couldn't attend the whole. Uh, uh, talk, uh, but I have some questions. Uh, I think these are the typical questions asked uh, by the inter interviewer. So it's a bit more related to what uh, Divya asked in the beginning. So normally, um, the, the interviewer asks that what are um, the three things, for example, you are bringing to the company, or what are your three strengths. Uh, this is one question, and uh, the next is that. Um, where do you see in the next three, five, or 10 years? So I don't know what actually the interviewer want to um, see and what would be the appropriate answer to those uh, typical questions, how, how to correct that. Right. Um, I'll repeat uh, the two questions that you mentioned so that I answer them correctly. The first one was, what are your three strengths? And the second one was, uh, where do you see yourself three years, five years down the line? Yeah, and what, one more was that, uh, what do you bring to the company? Like, what are the three benefits? Or like, what, what, what would you bring to the company? Like, ah. what would you bring to the company? Yeah. Okay. Trends. Uh, three, five years. Well, uh, <clears throat> There are two ways of answering the question. And uh, now, since our focus is more from an interview angle, I will uh, share a tactic there. It's not a negative tactic, it's a positive tactic. So firstly, uh, strengths, we will, as, as individuals, we will know hundreds of strengths of ourselves, right? But uh, the choice of strengths that you should make is based on what role you're applying for. And generally, if it is, uh, since, since I'm assuming you are in a specialist role, um, uh, there should be two functional strengths and one teamwork strength, how to work with different people, how to accept diversities, how to be biasless, how to be more inclusive. So any of those, right? You're inclusive, you're diverse, any of those. Functional could be based on what role you're applying for. So your response should not be what you feel and the response cannot be motherhood statements. It has to be something in sync with your purpose at that point in time because the evaluator is going to make assessments and decisions based on that, right? And at that point in time, your objective is to crack the interview. So respond to the question based on what the role is from a functional standpoint and more importantly, do your homework. Do your homework what the role is. Don't land up there just because someone's told that there's an interview today. Do your homework, which company it is for. What is this company around? Uh, uh, where does it stand today? How does my role contribute to this company's role? What is my job description going to be? What are my key performance indicators? Read a little bit, ask these questions from whoever has asked you to attend the interview and then uh, jump into this experience. Uh, so strengths should technically be a combo of that. Three to five years ahead, remember, since you have done your homework about the organization, based on that, evaluate where are you going to start today and where would you be five years down the line. A lot of customization of your response to which company you're getting interviewed with is what will make a difference. And third, what can you bring to your company? One, uh, is my functional uh, expertise. If I may ask uh, Bilal, what is your background? Um, I'm a, a pharmacist by profession and now I'm doing my PhD and again in clinical pharmacy. What pharmacy? Clinical pharmacy. Clinical, clinical. Pharmacy. yeah. Okay, okay. And is it, uh, I'm assuming it's uh, quantitative by nature, am I right? 
Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. More, more about uh, modeling software. Modeling. Uh, like, okay. Yeah. Got it. So um, let's say PhD is the reference to this job interview and uh, it is in industry, then industry will appreciate your functional capabilities and that could be around your research capabilities, your clinical capabilities to understand, to your clinical uh, pharmacy understanding capabilities. And uh, the third one could always be, um, so I was talking about what brings, what will you bring to the company? You will talk about your research strengths as a result of which you'll be able to do logical reasoning, analytical reasoning, and be able to find where the gaps are and where, how can we plug them, which therefore means you have problem solving capabilities. The second one would be, since you, you have, you have been in multiple geographies, working with people from diverse backgrounds is going to be easy, irrespective of their education background, irrespective of the geographies. And the third one is uh, passion and dedication towards the domain. So when you use, uh, when, when you give responses like this, which, give, which is a mix of multiple things and uh, is convincing the other person that yes, this is something that is going to make a difference. Then I think it clicks. It's a short response. It's a, it's a favorite topic of mine. And I generally talk for hours together, but I've tried giving a short response. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Humphrey. I hope I pronounced your name right. Yeah, that's the name. Thank you. Thank you, Doc, for all your very insightful presentation. Mine is, uh, what are the no-go areas in personal branding? Can you repeat? Can it you hear me? So what are the no-go areas in personal branding? No-go areas. Sure. Um, when you're uh, three points that I can think of one uh, any kind of negative impact on others a negative impact can be as a result of your uh, action as a result of what you speak as a result of what you write any kind of negative impact that you foresee even the fact that you're able to foresee, then don't even head there. That's the first one. Second, never overdo. Like one of our uh, uh, participants here said, never overdo. Let there be a limit. And third, uh, don't falsify anything. False assumptions. Uh, flawed assumptions, uh, no, no grounding to the purpose, then there's a problem. These are the three things that I can immediately think of. Okay. Thank you. Well, I have one question. So when we, when we are setting a company brand, so company will have its own personal brand, for example, Faba. We are we are kind of a young team and and uh, sometimes we forget that we we have a long personal history, long company history, and then we will be thinking something new, and sometimes we look back and say like, are we supposed to write this? Are we supposed to say this? So how do you usually set, especially now you have seen many companies right, and setting a personal brand or send, setting some kind of uh, rules. So how do you you basically deal with it? Right. Um, there is something, there's an activity called as uh, periference uh, and periference is, uh, um, I'm talking from a company's angle when I know what my vision is, which is a super far sighted thingy, right? And when I know what my mission is, mm -hmm. I know the direction. Mm -hmm. So anything that I want to do, 500 activities do all these 500 align and will take me in this to this destination. Mm -hmm. If only 100 are going to, then 400 is the elimination, and that's periference. Okay. okay. But this is the this is around direction, right? The next mm -hmm. thing is values. Mm -hmm. What are our core values that will revolve that we will revolve around to execute our activities? 
identifying the values and company values should should not be in sync with summation of five personal values they are different mm -hmm. company value has to be in sync with the company purpose or company vision so values that are going to make a difference to drive this vision better bigger thing is what should come into picture so the values become my parameters to evaluate which are those 100 which are those 400 okay mm -hmm. and uh, this periference activity has to be done consistently or regularly mm -hmm. because we as human beings will have a tendency <laughs> to digress sure so the moment we realize we have digressed enough mm -hmm. and we should come back and run a periference activity is this really and that's where we have to play the heart of devil's advocate is this really okay something that is going to make a difference and take us in the direction that is deemed fit. Thank you. Uh, the best way to uh, understand what I meant and what I just explained, pick up um, uh, company values. For example, pick up um, uh, WHO, WHO, vision, mission, values. Mm. Pick up uh, uh, similarly, you can look at, for example, um, uh, I'm forgetting the name, Ashoka, Ashoka University. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, in India, for that matter, we have, uh, uh, you can pick up uh, our legacy brands like Legit Papad. Legit Papad, ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a self-help group. Mm -hmm. couple of women started it mm -hmm. today you see it's a movement yeah similarly amul mm -hmm. so uh, just for referencing like what did aman really try to tell it was too abstract mm -hmm. if so you can go back to these references and you will know what peripherence activities i mm -hmm. try to build my periphery mm -hmm. around which we will operate okay i'll give uh, one small example um zav foundation which is my uh, social enterprise mm -hmm. Uh, we are, we, our focus is pure play around enablement of, of uh, a good question of youth, teachers mm -hmm. and women. Okay. And enablement has a simple meaning, teach them to fish. Mm. Any aspect. Any aspect, any aspect. Uh, but teach them. So the focus is on teach them. The focus is not on uh, serving a meal when they are hungry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't have scholarships. Mm -hmm. That's not our agenda. That's mm -hmm. not our vision. Mm -hmm. But yes, I personally go, I go and train people. I mm -hmm. go and deliver capacity building programs to that NGO in Hyderabad in a certain place. To mm -hmm. those 50 bridge schools, we go and invest time. And yep. that is each to fish. Mm. Um, um, there are these multiple initiatives, multiple forums, which tell, can you please build one orphanage? Mm. Uh, can I build? Yes, I have FCRA. I have ATG. I had 12A. I, and in my trust deed, I have written all 5,000 things that I can do in this world. <laughs> but do I really want to do this? Is mm. this in sync with my vision? If no, then we pause. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much. We also have a president from Nigeria, Judith. Judy, do you want to speak? Okay, just to say thank you very much. <laughs> sure. Thank you very much, Doctor, for all the insightful presentation. Um, I'm really, really amazed to hear about, um, how one can answer in interviews, how we can address some um, questions. So it's, it's a very, very um, insightful lecture you have given us. Thank you very much from the Nigerian um, people are, are, are around. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Jagadesh, for putting this up. Thank you. Sure, Julie. Thank you. Thanks, you. Anybody else who wants to ask or speak or any help needed? Okay. Gloria. Yes. Good afternoon from Nigeria. 
really want to thank Faba and Dr. Jane for the very insightful and wonderful presentation. So it's really, really, I really learned a lot. Thank you so much, my appreciation. Thank you so much, Gloria. <laughs> Good. Okay. I don't see any any questions or anything. So, Prasad sir, do you want to share any insights? I I think with your experience, you might have seen a lot. I was just going through your LinkedIn profile. You come from Indian immunologicals. Oh, One yeah. of good friend of Redana sir. <laughs> no, in fact, uh, the two relevant examples what uh, Dr. Amal Jain has taken about uh, Amul. And uh, of course, uh, Amul is something which is uh, close to our heart. Uh, I, our Indian Immunologicals is uh, a subsidiary of National Dairy Development Board, so which has actually nurtured uh, Amul as, a, uh, as, a, as an organization and as a brand. So that's a great example that uh, he has given when it comes to uh, branding organizations. And your question about uh, the branding organizations was, uh, I mean, that's 100% relevant. So I, I must say, Dr. Jain, uh, you have you have brought in uh, quite a good context uh, for the current uh, generation, and uh, branding uh, ourselves is very much important because people would like to uh, see us as as uh, leaders, and uh, when when we want to when we want to grow as leaders, then it's it's like an evolution, and not only not only uh, what people want to see us. That's that's a different aspect. As persons, we also have to evolve over a period of time. So it's uh, a lot of introspection is required. And uh, these tips, what you have given today, definitely uh, will show the way how to actually present ourselves and uh, project ourselves to the uh, to the world and also to introspect. Uh, that's a very important uh, uh, thing uh, that needs to be communicated. And I'm, I'm personally, I'm also glad that uh, you are doing some many things uh, at a personal uh, uh, level where you are interacting with uh, the youth and that's a subject matter of my interest also maybe i'll definitely connect with you uh, when i when i spoke about uh, uh, empowering uh, rural youth and empowering uh, the, i mean uh, providing employment for them i have some uh, some ideas on that definitely i'll contact you and uh, uh, we must we must uh, get in touch more frequently Yes, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Jagdish. Uh, this has been a good uh, session. Although uh, we have joined Indian Immunologicals has become a member and uh, probably this is the first time I'm attending <laughs> uh, a session. In fact, sure. I am thinking uh, maybe more technical sessions uh, I'll bring in some of uh, our uh, uh, technical experts also uh, in future. So yeah. that, uh, that's a way forward uh, for us. Sure, sir. Yeah, the technical sessions we do through workshops and other things, sir. So yeah, I, I would like to involve uh, some of our uh, uh, colleagues uh, into the tech. Though I am not a I'm I'm not a technical person. I'm I'm into finance. Yes, sir. I am into business development and uh, corporate social responsibility is yet another activity of mine in the organization. So that's okay. where I get again connected to Dr. Raman Jain. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. I mean, I is a strong supporter for us, and uh, Redana sir also shares like very uh, you know long, long history with Anand Kumar Garu when he took delegation to Pakistan, where you know a new business opened for IL in Pakistan. So yeah. I think uh, that's where Faba was doing great job in in big big things, but helping students was something that uh, it was never a mandate for Faba, and in startups. So that's where we started. From 2020 with academy and entrepreneurship and with this Faber Fridays, we, we we talk only soft skills, very less about hard skills because every college I think is good at in teaching hard skills like you know genomics or anything, but how to get a job after genomics studying genomics is something that nobody teaches. That's yeah, where Faber yes. Fridays. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you for joining, Prasad sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Raman, it was a pleasure to have you today. I think uh, you showed us not only personal brand, company branding, and, and uh, very passionately you took all the questions and you, you're still smiling after one and a half hours. <laughs> that shows the passion you have for teaching. And um, with the CSR activity, let us know how Faber can also collaborate with you because we are also nonprofit and we are also thinking to build our own lab to help out 
students uh, mainly to do researches and also anybody mainly from tier two tier three cities who do not have access to any laboratories we want to train them and that's where we are we are kind of conceptualizing a laboratory where in a simple technique like how to hold a pipette they do not know so that's where we, we want to play a major role yeah. absolutely absolutely sure, man. Yeah. and thank you all the participants for joining today uh, we stay in touch on the faba friday's whatsapp group and if there are any questions or anything that you need please let us know we'll we'll definitely take it forward bye right. for today thank you everyone have a good day bye everyone happy thank weekend you. thank you bye bye thank you bye bye thank you